where they normally are. Um, good morning and thank you for having me here this morning. Thank you, Uncle Lewis. Thank you, Kira. Um, it's always great to have such an informative welcome to country and every time I hear you, I learn something new. So your role as educator continues, so thank you very much. And I also want to acknowledge, obviously, the uh, that we are on the traditional lands of the Ghana people and acknowledge their cultural authority and their traditional relationship with this country and to pay my respects to elders past and present and to elders from around the country who may be in the room with us as well. Um, keynote address always sounds pretty... Um, Wow, and I kind of, when I hear it, I go, oh, I was hoping to just come up and have a bit of a yarn, really, and a chat about what I'm doing and to set a bit of a tone, hopefully, around the future proofing of the arts because it's been a really interesting concept that since I've been in this role, future proofing has been the term that I've been using a lot, future proofing democracy, future proofing our children, future proofing a whole range of sectors. So it fits really well. What I want to say is that I am the inaugural uh, Commissioner for Children and Young People in South Australia. I've only been in the job since the end of April, so it's very, very new. Uh, and in that role, um, for you people from around the country, you've all had children's commissioners for a long time. And so it's not probably nearly as exciting as it is for me and for South Australians to say, we finally have a children's and Young Persons Commissioner. It's been a long time in the making in South Australia. I think since 2002 is my earliest recollection of a call for the need for a Commissioner for Children. So that's quite a long time in the baking, really. So over 15 years. And so it is my absolute privilege to be the first. But with the first comes great expectations um, and great kind of... Uh, this whole pressure around where do we start and what do we do. Around the country there are, as I said, there are uh, children's commissioners of various types and sizes and they all have different kinds of roles. A lot focused on child protection, others focus very much on children and young people from quite vulnerable backgrounds. Uh, but I think that what we've, what I've been blessed with in this role is one of the most generous pieces of legislation that underpins the work that I do. So unlike other jurisdictions around the country, uh, I have a mandate to promote and protect the rights, interests, development and well-being of all South Australian under 18 year olds. So it's a significantly different um, kind of role really in terms of other, other jurisdictions in that it's broad mandate uh, and it really doesn't tie me to any particular sector. So what do you do when you've got, when you're the first, when you've got a really broad piece of legislation um, and when you're essentially a start-up. So I need, I just need to put my timer on, that's what I forgot to do. Um, so essentially I've been spending the last couple of months working out where I'm going to focus my energy and my efforts. Uh, as a start-up, which I keep saying it is, uh, no staff, no photocopier, no stationery. Uh, so you imagine, so I feel very, I'm sure I'm speaking to people in this room who've done this, who have done this whole kind of where are we going, what are we doing um, and so I have spent the last few months really thinking about it deeply uh, and the other thing I really thought was it was important that I went straight out and spoke with children and young people and I say to them it's been a long time since I was young or under, a long long time since I was under 18 and being a young person in 2017 is not the same as being a young person in the 60s and 70s so it was really important that I spent the first few months having deep conversations with children and young people and that's essentially what I'm just going to give you a bit of a kind of where I'm going with the thinking that I've been doing. So I have a vision. I'm going to drive the mouse as well. 
Uh, oh, backwards, that's right. Backwards, not forwards. Um, and look, and this is an evolving vision. This just says that we strive for a state that ensures children and young people are valued and where their wellbeing development is a community priority. We encourage adults to shift attitudes and place children and young people at the forefront of their thoughts and actions. I think if we lived in a state where that was happening, some of the issues and some of the challenges we face would disappear. Uh, it is a vision that's been part of this first phase. It will evolve, it will change, but as a starting point we thought it captured probably the real intention of elevating the interests of children and young people, but most importantly giving the challenge to adults to say this is our responsibility to do this. And in doing so, I've been really struck, I guess, I come from a whole history of health and community services which has been needs and issues based. And one of the things I was really interested in this broad role is to say we actually need to view children and young people in this light. We need to see them as drivers of social change. We need to see them as partners in policy and system reform. We need to see them as contributors with insights and views. And we need to see them as stakeholders. And if we start, if we start to actually change the way we view their participation and contribution, we change so much about the way that we actually treat them and the way that we protect and look after them. So that's probably the first kind of critical piece, that it is a different way of looking at them. So not from a needs base, but certainly from the positive contribution. So in terms of that, my focus is essentially to raise children and young people's issues and interests higher on the public agenda. So this is what my role encompasses. To enfranchise children and young people's participation in public life and policy development. To promote and protect the rights of South Australian children and young people to be respected and valued. And to expand opportunities for them to have meaning involvement, meaningful involvement in their communities. And whilst this all sounds for some people, yep, we've heard this before. Um, we may have heard it before, but we haven't actually done it. So I think what we're saying is it is a time for action. Uh, and one of the, the things about having someone whose whole role it is to actually do this and to listen consistently and constantly with children and young people is there is a person in a senior role in this state whose job it is to actually keep this stuff alive and my success and my office's success will be based on how well we actually do this. And so this is what we've also been talking to children and young people about when I go out. So, we have a long way to go. Uh, we don't actively promote or support children and young people's right to participate. We don't really recognise them as having useful and legitimate contributions. We do in pockets. When it's very, very targeted, we say, yep, let's talk to kids. But when we're talking about public transport, of which they're the greatest user, we don't talk to them about that. When we talk to them about a whole range of public policy issues that actually um, impact every day on them, we don't seek their contributions. We certainly, um, we see them as valuable in the future. <laughs> Not now. We see them as empty cups that we're filling, and if we fill them well, they'll be good citizens. Uh, and this really worries me, the way children talk about themselves in that context, about them being valuable when they're past 18. Um, they don't certainly are not looked on as valid stakeholders. I've just done a really uh, quick and dirty analysis of all the strategic plans of all the departments in the state and uh, they're not rated. I think one department actually talks about speaking with them. The rest of them, there's an assumption if you speak to other community members, their interests will be picked up. But there's very little specific around talking to children and young people. And the other thing is they don't know they have the right to participate. So what would it mean? Do you know this? I'm sure. But it does help to be reminded. We need, um, we need to actually elevate the status of them in everything that we do. We need to consider the impacts of decisions and processes on them. Um, we need to seek input from children and young people. We need to take their views 
seriously, not do it for the sake of doing it, but actually listen and take it into account and just give it agency. I think the other thing is listen, you know, asking for the sake of asking without doing anything with it. Um, we need to have feedback mechanisms that children and young people can use independently. The other analysis I've been doing is how can a child complain? Uh, it's hard for adults to complain, you'd be a child. You can't. You can't complain in the education system as a child. <laughs> you can't complain in health other than through adults. So there are a whole range of things we need to actually do. And we need to see them as beyond passive consumers of product or of art, of culture. We need to see them as active participants. And I know there are lots of you in this room who will be doing just that. And it is about, I think, part of my role is taking the great things that are happening in pockets and actually systematising it because if it continues to happen in pockets we're never actually going to achieve that vision of putting their interests at the forefront of our actions and processes. So I have a really, so my role is essentially about awareness raising, engagement, participation and systemic advocacy. So unlike other commissioners in some jurisdictions, I don't have an individual complaints function. I don't address individual matters, but I certainly have a quite significant potential to look at systemic issues. So issues can be referred to me from Guardian, from the Ombudsman, from death and serious Serious injury committees. So a range of those other groups can actually refer matters to me and say there's something going on here that you need to look into. So I've spent my last few months working all this out um, without a blueprint. But as I said, the most important thing I think is what I've been doing. So I've been doing three main things. Obviously stakeholder engagement, going out, speaking to adults in charge of lots of things and saying this message about where are children in your department, where are children in your policies, where are children featuring. The other thing I did was some quick and dirty public polling to actually go out to children and young people in public spaces and ask them some questions. And the other thing is what's called a listening tour. It's called a listening tour when I first started. I think I'm, I I wish, you know, you always wish you had 2020 vision in hindsight. I wish I'd called it something far more um, evocative and engaging because what I've done is not described well by a listening tour. So I'll just quickly go, I'm just checking my time. Um, so my polling questions of which you might be interested are, oops, not that one. So I've been asking them on picture polls, who are your heroes? What are the best things about school? What do you spend your time doing? What are your hopes for the future? And most importantly for me, which was about working out what platforms I was going to be on, what internet sites you visit. So this was really interesting because um, I didn't know about a whole heap of things that were told to me in this. And so it says, which ones you use and which ones do you think are not here that you use? Um, and what it sent to me is, I need to be on YouTube and Spotify. <laughs> and it, Essentially, so that's now where my energy and efforts will be because that's where kids are. So it, that's been pretty interesting. The listening to a questions, um, which is a bit more of a disruptive piece, I think, than it, than it lends, it's, the words lend themselves to. I've asked them three questions. What's important to you? What would you change to make life better for children and young people in South Australia? And the one thing that you want me to do or know. I've had 1,300 conversations on these three questions in 11 weeks. I'm exhausted, but... Um, <laughs> Most importantly, I've been to places. Oh, I just feel a song coming on. I've been to places uh, that uh, I've been to met kids in in churches, in parks, in detention centres, in residential care, in youth, in shelters, in community centres, in schools, in childcare centres, in bush settings, in you name it. I have been all over the place. I've been Mount Gambier, Port Lincoln, all the schools on the APY, I've been to Port Pirie, Port Augusta, the Flurio Peninsula, the Mid-North. I have spent 
spent day and night and weekends having this conversation in small groups and they have been conversations. And what I did was a deliberate process that said the, real, the thing I really wanted to know was the one thing they wanted me to do or know because that was going to set my priority and my plan. I really wanted it to be statistically significant to actually make a plan from. So not a couple of hundred kids but 1,300 kids. I really wanted to be able to talk to two year olds and 21 year olds. So I did the whole kind of range in between. Two year olds are pretty tricky to engage. Uh, four year olds are really smart. Um, so the four year old stuff was incredible. Um, and everything in between. And every single one of these 1,300 have let me, written me a note. And so the one thing they want me to know is on a note that's folded over and put into a little box. So it's a very personal, it's from them personally. What I found was you can't get kids to go here unless you take them through a process. And what's come out of that process is the most amazingly rich data that I think anyone has captured. So now I have clouds with what's important to me. So I can tell you what's important important to kids, 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14. I can tell you about the things that they want to change and that's kind of the real focus of where my officer's work will go. So it has been, I said to people, if I can't do engagement and participation well, then who can? Uh, because I really do need to set that kind of benchmark and say this can be done with thought um, and to really think about what it is we're trying to do. I've got an office now full of, and we've done this on canvases, on brown paper, on individual paper, we've done it on a whole range of different um, kind of mediums and so we're now in the process of trying to do justice to this amazing information and be able to present it back to the community in a way that actually um, makes sense. So I've got about a minute to go. So I'm going to just quickly rush you through because this is, a, I guess, a bit of a teaser that says it's coming. There's going to be this kind of amazingly rich information that people are going to want to know. Hopefully you'll want to know. You'll want to know what it is that kids are talking about. But I'll just give you a really quick one, if I can. So, and then what do you spend your time doing? I polled 331 children. And you might be interested, 28% of them like creating art, 19% of them like dancing, 46% of them are into playing or listening to music. So a third of our kids, this is pretty consistent across the age ranges. Music goes up, not surprisingly, as you get older, dance goes down. But overall, from zero to 18, our kids are really engaged in this kind of activity. I can break it down into a whole range of other things as well. But that's a sense of the kind of stuff we're being able to pull out from our polling. This is... Um, so, in the what's important to me, I have got thousands of these clouds that say things like this. Music makes you feel like you're in another world. It's beautiful stuff. Music and art during relaxing. So this is in that's what's important to me. Spotify, see. <laughs> Music festivals. So this is a yeah, triple down. Yeah. Um, dance, performing on stage, sharing this passion with like-minded group. Like this is gold, isn't it? Like this is the stuff. Ooh. There's my timer. Um, my fairy dust that I can't turn off. How do I remember? Um, so, but it is this stuff that I, I'm like, I'm really, I think the really powerful thing is I've decided that, that it will always be in their own hand. So whilst I am a representative of these voices, when I speak and when I am um, I'm going to talk about issues relating to children and young people. It's really important that it is completely evidence-based. So it will always be in their hand uh, and it will always be authentically produced rather than an interpretation because one of the things I think has been a real challenge is to tell people who work with children and young people that yes, they are incredibly important and yes, they're strong enablers but they're not children and young people. 
Um, so things like oh, why is not going? I've got the mouse upside down. Um, so this, you know, you need to go around to the people who actually do drama rather than making ideas alone. So this was kids in a school saying, you know, <laughs> more musicals. <laughs> Did you know? This is when asked what they want to change. Placing out with live music without drunk 18 year old older people. This was consistent. Kids everywhere have said to me they want a place to hang out and they don't want adults because they're drunk. <laughs> what do they want? An international DJ competition and more dance opportunities. I'm not getting this mouse right, am I? Um, do more with the arts, music, drama, union, but you can read it. I don't know what the last bit. I can't remember that. I can. So I can vote. Yeah. And, and when I sit, because I've been part of all these conversations, I can, I, you know, once I kind of get into that zone, I can recall most of them. Because this has been every single, every single one. This has been small enough groups that I've interacted individually with every single one of those kids. Um, they feel important. They, feel, they start off saying, this is the weirdest thing I've ever had to do. You're weird. <laughs> You're really weird. Um, you're like a weird nana. Um, <laughs> so I get a lot of, you know, crazy kind of, uh, you know, round the twist kind of stuff. But anyway, it's all very odd. Um, and then they get, uh, they get into it. Um, you know, and then they say things like, we want special ed drama funding. More drama teachers, so special ed students can be involved in mainstream and special stuff. You know, it's pretty good. LGBTIQ theatre opportunities. Why am I? <laughs> so they write improve essay, Helen. Bye. Da -da -da -da. Just a small task, really. Um, so I think that's probably all of them. Maybe. Can you tick? That's it? That's the last one? OK. So you get a sense. These kids are real smart. You know, we've got really intelligent, engaged children, young people, when you actually ask them. But it's hard to get it out of them. It's hard to often extract this. It's a purposeful, meaningful in conversation that's convivial, that's, um, that's open. But it is really difficult for young people in our state to connect their hearts and their heads. And so if you go to what do you want to change straight up, they can do this and it's all here. When you ask them about what's important and why they want to change those things, it's a much tougher thing for them to get to. But we manage to actually extract so much rich information. My job now is to ensure that you who need it can get it in a way that means something to you, but more importantly that I can have a mechanism to report back to all these amazing people who have contributed in a respectful way. It's an enormous challenge. I don't have the answer. I'm here for a couple of hours this morning, so if you do, please come and tell me. Um, because it is, it's really tricky. I can't go back to all of them. I can't, they are anonymous. That's the other thing. No names, just ages, so I'm not collecting in a way that I can go back. Um, and the anonymity was the power of being able to get those those messages on those sheets. Uh, and I've, I've got great reason for hope and optimism. Uh, but I have equally reason to be concerned about how we can, how we actually systemically engage and uh, young people, and how we have them participating in our world. So that's my story so far. Uh, hopefully, it sets a bit of a theme and a tone for you when you're deliberating over the day around what's happening. That this is really, this is the core, this is the foundation, this is what we need to build on. So thank you.